So we'll go not this way, because it appears to be getting worse the further we go on it. Let's go this way. I was thinking about what Byron said about being responsible when you have guests, which is of course essential. But there's also a degree of responsibility that falls on the guests themselves. And one particular story came to mind, which was driving in the dark on my way home. And I had a lady sitting next to me in the passenger seat because it's the best place to sit if you've got any kind of sore back and you don't want to be bouncing around in the back of the vehicle. You sit over the front wheels and you don't bounce nearly as much. And the, the problem with this particular instance was that I could smell an elephant bull in must and I knew that there was a particular male there that was... He, he was a naughty boy when he was in must and he, he tended to chase cars and he tended to be quite difficult. So I, I was trying to avoid him and I knew he was in the area. It was pitch black, spotlighting. And the lady next to me, her bracelet caught on the hairs on her arm and pinched a little bit. But she let off this blood-curdling scream in my ear while I was looking off to the right. And you know when you get a fright and your instant reaction is to get very angry? And of course, she's a guest of mine, so I can't really shout at her and... But I knew, you know, I really thought that a lion was in, the, the, the scream conveyed that she was in deathly danger and possibly about to die. It was one of those, it was an utterly terrifying blood curdling scream. And usually you can, you can distinguish between serious cries and, and not so serious cries, but that actually, I nearly jumped 20 feet out of my seat. I really wanted to shout at her. It was a slight overreaction to having the hairs on her arm pulled. You know, all sorts of reactions get triggered from that. I'd slammed on the brakes because I thought that we were about to drive into something. So people behind me all got a jolt. What my point of view, well, there we go, in terms of responsibility of the guides, what my point of view on animals getting too close to the cars is. It very much depends on the situation. I do not, I think there is a limit to what animals should be allowed to do. We respect their personal space. They know that there's a boundary and they know when they are crossing it. I, I'm, I'm absolutely certain of that. So there are certain animals I will get let get close because they're not a danger, hyena cubs, for example, but there's a limit. They must not touch my vehicle. That's my standard rule. Nothing must get close enough that it can reach out and touch my vehicle because let's say some lady bracelet let's say you've got an elephant walking right past her let's say some lady's bracelet catches on her arm and she lets off a blood curdling scream and all of a sudden a relaxed elephant sighting that you had turns into something very different so I draw the line at touching my cars if I feel as though I've got guests who are and it, again, you gauge the reaction of the guests. If I feel like I've got guests who are calm and the elephants are calm and they're walking right past us, perfect. If I've got a young male that wants to come and touch my car, that's not that's not acceptable. And it, usually all it takes is a little, just a little knock on the side of the door, a little, hey, just a change in tone. They recognize that instantly. I don't believe you should let Cheetah jump onto your car. I've had lions use me as a barrier before. I've had hyenas try and count under my car, which again, is not something that I would let happen. And again, with our cameramen, I know that they know how to behave. So I might be more inclined to let an elephant wander very close to the vehicle with them. Not because I value them any less than a guest, but because I know their reactions are predictable. 